But if you're looking at commuters, how could you forget the scooters? So to that end, let's go and have a look at Italjet's Dragster 180. Now here is a scooter that's attracted more than its fair amount of attention. It's a 180cc two-stroke Italjet Dragster. It does come in a smaller 125, but we'll come to that maybe a little bit later. In terms of the 180 though, why did it attract so much attention? Well, look at it. There's that hub centre steering up at the front, that lattice frame that kind of reminds you of a Ducati just a little bit. There's the fact it comes in screaming Dayglow yellow, or perhaps Dayglow orange, and as well as that, it does just over 90 miles an hour. And that is a lot of speed for a little scooter. Get on board the Dragster, you'll find it feels very skinny. It also feels very long, which it is for a scooter. And you'll also notice the seat is particularly hard, but you'll probably be so excited about the fact that you're riding what is one of the fastest scooters ever built that you'll be too excited as you stretch your hands out to those chromy bars, look over the funny clocks and get ready to attack town and traffic alike. Pull away, give it some welly, and you will be pleasantly surprised. This is a quick scooter. There's a nice buzz from the two-stroke motor as it crisply gets itself going, and all in all, you'll be having a jolly good time until you come to a corner. It's at this point that the whole dragster world goes horribly pear-shaped. For starters, the brakes are average at best. But assuming you have managed to slow down enough and are ready to go into the corner, the next thing you'll find is the dragster has no inclination whatsoever to go from upright to lent over. Get some muscle involved, you'll finally get the thing over, teetering on its little wheels, bouncing about the place, and you'll then discover that it also feels like it's hinged in the middle and wants to sit up at the slightest hint of a bump anywhere on the corner. The overall experience can only be described as terrifying. Best bet is to back off, go slow, and enjoy the straight bits. Unfortunately, they're not all that enjoyable because this is a scooter after all. And should you spend some time in the saddle on the dragster, you'll also find it's very, very uncomfortable. It's a funny tall riding position for a scooter and the stretch of the bars is actually quite a long way. Also, the fact that that clever rear shock that's mounted in front of your feet doesn't actually really do a great deal and the fact that the dragster has small wheels like most scooters means that every single bump and ripple that you go over in the road is transferred straight through to your backside and your lower spine. This is not a bike for old people, I have to say and nor is it particularly useful, which is something that scooters should be. The dragster may look very good, but where's the space to put your shop in? There is an under-seat cubby hole, but it's not big enough to get a helmet in, and nor is it very big that you can get that much shopping in it either. But now, it's time for the scores. Performance, five out of 10. The motor is an absolute little stormer, but sadly, the handling is next to non-existent, and the brakes are distinctly average. Styling, seven out of 10. Certainly looks cool, but that much form over so little function really shouldn't be allowed. Reliability, two. Not really a long-term prospect, whichever way you cut it. Value for money, two out of 10. There are so many other better scooters you can buy for the money. Street cred, six out of 10. The kids are gonna think you're cool and you're gonna have plenty of time to be admired when you're parked up at the side of the road having given up on riding the thing. So there you have it, Italjet's Dragster 180, possibly the best looking and worst handling scooter on the market at the moment. And if it ever came to having to choose between one of those and a Honda DeVille, I'd take the DeVille any day of the week because it actually works.